Yeah. And what are, what do you think? I, mean, I know this is just kind of theory talking, but what do you think they're going to try and pin on Eddie? Everything like I don't know the the mom and son's death and all of that. I, I mean, we don't know yet, but like. They're going to do everything they can to, to point protect, the finger yeah, at Alec. anybody. They right? just have to cast doubt on Alec. Um, I I have thought about it. I wrap my mind around. I'm like, what could Eddie's motive be for this? That I can't reconcile. It's kind of creative, things. though. Well, we were we were texting last night because we were talking about this, and I'm laying in bed, and Sarah <laughs> said, text me. He couldn't even shoot Alec. <laughs> when Alec said, "Please, Please kill me. me. <laughs> I'll be here at this time." kill me <laughs> and and asked him to do it and i guess paid him to do it and he still failed at that he still so wouldn't do it how right. did he go and kill maggie and paul it's a good question hide the weapons leave no dna you know cousin eddie just doesn't he has a sixth grade education too he can barely read and write he's not for someone with the power and money that alec murdoch has if he wanted someone to kill his family he would have not He'd been the eddie. last choice yeah i would think yeah i would so it's it just for me to wrap my mind around Eddie did it is a is a strategy that I did not think that this defense team was going to take. But when I read that motion, I was like, "There, no way." Yeah. Are they going to try to put this on Eddie? Yeah. And, so, and then and here we are. Here we are. I guess yeah. we'll just keep on reading the motions because it's better. It's better than <laughs> the motions are better than Fitz News. Oh, they're way yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're way better. So what else has happened? I know there's other other updates since our last chat. What so, else is happening? Um, Russell Lafitte has been indicted by the feds which is huge because this is the first time we've seen um, the federal government step in um, with the information that the FBI has gathered. Wow. Um, so he's the, the first one. We know that he signed a proffer and a proffer is, um, I'm going to tell you everything. And, and part of that proffer is I have to tell you everything and it has to be the truth. Mm -hmm. And to protect themselves. And, and you will give me leniency for being open and honest and like just spilling the beans, right? On everything and, and everybody. Mm. And what we've learned is um, since then is that he lied. After signing that, he yes. still lied. He has lied. He lied about um, that. So it's semantics, but he lied about a lot of things that really mattered because he tried to, his lies are him trying to distance himself from everything. Mm -hmm. We also learned that he gave a deposition this summer and in that deposition, uh, he admitted and insinuated that, well, actually he just said it, that the board of directors at Palmetto State Bank knew what was going on and um, helped divert funds in a way that would keep them from being liable. And he also um, insinuated that um, attorneys at uh, Murdoch's old law firm, PMPED, um, were also a part of that scheme. Wow. And we also know that um, a partner at that firm um, received very large checks mm -mm -mm. Um, for hundreds of thousands of dollars out of... Um, loans that were fraudulent and they were running a major ponzi scheme is what it boiled down to it's amazing to me how this circle just how many people knew and didn't do anything yeah. and were involved in this I mean, I mean nothing about it on any level passes the smell test um like in our firm we in every law firm you have to account for every penny that that you take in in a mm -hmm. personal injury case mm -hmm. in criminal it's different so in a criminal case you take a flat fee it's not billed by the hour or anything like that take a flat fee that that money never goes into our trust account mm -hmm. right that's up that goes into your operating account but in a civil case uh, in particular a personal injury case which is what the murdochs um, did and pmpd you account for every penny so that whole check from the insurance company goes into your trust account and every penny is accounted for so if i put in a hundred thousand dollar insurance check I can tell you where every dollar of that and every penny from that check, where it went. Right. I can tell you that this amount went to the client, this amount went to a lien, this amount went to the um, medical provider, all these things. We know exactly every penny is accounted for. And so it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And we've said this before with Forge, like you never write a check to Forge. Forge writes a check to you mm -hmm. um, because the, it's a... The, to keep it tax, the whole point of Forge and these annuities, without getting into that, is yeah. to keep it tax-free for the injured person later. And there's all these rules would boil down to um, that money can never 
come to our office. It has to go straight from the insurance company to the annuity. And so the money that's going to Forge has to come straight from Geico, sends that money directly to the annuity. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know that Forge touches it. It's made out to, I, I don't know how it's made out because I never see it. Right. <laughs> it never comes to our office. Yeah, right. But then you get the confirmations that it's been received at the annuity. Here's the information. Give it to your client. And so the fact that the there were checks being written to Forge from the trust account She's is enough of already a red shady, yeah. flag. If I were to draft up, you know, a settlement sheet for Justin who cuts the check at our office and I had Forge, $25,000, he would be like... Bullshit. He would call what me the up there and this? be like, what is this? You know, because you don't write checks to Forge. You just don't. Yeah. Um, and, and they knew that. They were a very large, successful person or injury firm. So everybody there knew how that process worked mm-hmm. with Forge. And it still just blows my mind how that... Well, it also blows my mind that the bar has not come through it. And from what I understand, they've not right. done an, like an audit of their account to see if there's any other. Yeah, because I don't know, maybe I need to refresh my trust account or maybe they just scared me properly in law school <laughs> that, you know, we're all responsible for that money going missing. We're all responsible for each other. I know that um, at our firm, you and Justin are are the head people in charge. But if I'm stealing money, too, that comes out on you. Yeah. And if I know that. Charday's stealing money, that comes down on all of us if we're all doing it together. So, um, yeah, you, we have a duty to report those things to the bar. Yeah. That's part of being a lawyer. And we can get in trouble and suspended for not, for just not telling the bar that that's happening. And it could be the smallest amount of money. You know, we've chased down checks. We'll send a check to pay off a hospital bill for four dollars and 16 cents and the hospital never cashes it Uh and justin has us all running around like crazy people trying to find this four dollars and 16 cents because our books have we want it and we'll 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 like cancel the check and i will literally take it to the attorney that represents the the hospital wow and be like i need you to put this in the bank yeah today pinky swear off of our pinky swear because we want every penny to be accounted for Mm -hmm. and it just floating out there is just more than my little lawyer heart we're having to explain it and we don't want any kind of accusations like that and for lawyers that's like the number one thing you can do to get immediately disbarred yeah. is steal from your clients in your trust account so i got a better chance of killing someone and keeping my law license and stealing yeah money and from so them. the fact that this was happening for so long and for this large amount of money is just insanity insanity and now afterwards that there's not that everybody's not having to explain themselves um and why they didn't report if they knew explain all those things i just feel like you know, it's innocent until proven guilty in the regular world. But with a law license, you ha- you have to, we have to make sure that people with law licenses are not responsible for that kind of stuff. We've got to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Well, it also makes me upset that we're not like the, so I can understand that um, a police officer, a detective can't go through and look at those checks. Right. I right. don't want criminal charges brought. I'm, I'm not saying they have to defend themselves from that. Right. Even, you know? Yeah. We understand that there's like an attorney client privilege and a, mm-hmm. we don't want police officers coming into our office. Right. Sure. Yeah. I, I get that totally. But I think the South Carolina bar, and I mean this with all due respect, <laughs> <laughs> I think that they have a duty because what we've learned is, is we keep learning of more victims, but we're learning of more victims, not necessarily through more investigation. We're learning about more victims because they're coming forward. When life gets ugly, justice is